Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's October 4th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First things first, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks on the move this week within the world of waste, gas, and energy. As of October 4th, 2024, Brookfield Renewable Core is currently sitting at $31.91 per share. Nextera is up to $83.89 per share. Ranger Energy Services now sits at $12.14 per share. Forum Energy Technologies is now at $16.05 per share, and Black Hills Core is now sitting at $59.86 per share. But first up in the news, according to a new study published in the journal Environmental Science and Technology, researchers at Northwestern University have discovered how cells of a Chamomonas bacterium in wastewater are breaking down plastic for food. First, they chew the plastic into small pieces called nanoplastics. Then they secrete a specialized enzyme that breaks the plastics down even further. Finally, the bacterium uses a ring of carbon atoms from the plastic as a food source. Ludmilda Aristild, who ran the study, said, quote, We have systematically shown for the first time that a wastewater bacterium can take a starting plastic material, deteriorate it, fragment it, break it down, and use it as a source of carbon. It is amazing that this bacterium can perform that entire process, and we identified a key enzyme responsible for breaking down the plastic materials. This could be optimized and exploited to help get rid of plastics in the environment. End quote. And staying with wastewater for just a moment, a historic $71 million four-year-long contract to rehabilitate the Akatink Wastewater Pump Station in Fairfax County, Virginia, was recently executed by the state's Department of Public Works and Environmental Services. This contract will increase the capacity of the sewer infrastructure from 37 to 45 million gallons per day replace approximately 6,600 feet of piping, and upgrade the odor control system. The contract for this project is historic as it is the first local government project labor agreement to be administered in Virginia. District Supervisor James Walkinshaw said, quote, Virginia's first ever local government project labor agreement will help ensure that this critical infrastructure project is delivered and meets the needs of Fairfax residents for years to come. Treating workers fairly is the Fairfax way, and I'm proud of the Board of Supervisors and leadership for their commitment to this new approach. End quote. But now moving away from wastewater... Amerisco Incorporated, Republic Services Incorporated, and the Pacific Gas and Electric Company cut the ribbon this week on California's largest landfill gas to renewable natural gas plant located at the Keller Canyon Landfill in Pittsburgh, California. By having the capacity to process 4,500 standard cubic feet per minute of landfill gas, the plant is designed to reduce annual carbon emissions by approximately 62,000 metric tons, the equivalent of taking 30,000 cars off the road or displacing up to 7.5 million gallons of diesel fuel. This facility is the first RNG interconnection from a landfill gas project for Pacific Gas and Electric and is designed with the capacity to deliver approximately 1 billion cubic feet of RNG on an annual basis into the PG&E gas pipeline, making it the largest operational landfill gas to RNG plant in California. And speaking of Amerisco, the company also said this past week that it was in fact selected by the Wasatch Integrated Waste Management District to design, build, own, and operate a landfill gas to RNG plant at the Davis Landfill in Layton, Utah. 
Amerisco said the plant will be designed to reduce up to 953 million pounds per year of carbon dioxide emissions, equivalent to the carbon sequestered by removing nearly 80,000 cars from the road. Upon completion, Davis RNG is expected to replace the use of more than 8 million BTUs annually of fossil fuels such as coal and natural gas. But just a quick reminder, Recyclist is a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or you can even set up a personalized presentation by calling 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. And up next, a new country has officially entered the renewable natural gas market. The Vitagro group of companies, together with specialists from the Kimolnitsky branch of gas distribution networks of Ukraine LLC, has supplied biomethane to the Ukrainian gas transmission system for the first time, which will launch the export of Ukrainian biomethane. During the initial days of operation, the plant operated at 60 to 70 percent of the planned capacity and the daily volume of gas entering the distribution networks is approximately 6,000 cubic meters. In a statement, the company said, quote, The team of Vitagro Energy, together with specialists from the gas distribution network's operator, successfully ensured the first launch of biomethane, and gas has already begun to flow into the gas transmission system. This is the first and only such experience for the entire energy sector of Ukraine. End quote. And up next, this past week at the International Bioenergy Congress, Spanish company Ince Biogas announced they expect to reach a biomethane production of one terawatt hour by 2030, working with agricultural biomass, livestock, and the agri-food industry at large. The company further expects to close 2024, having reached 14 projects in environmental processing. According to the publication of the European Biogas Association, Spain currently has only nine biomethane plants compared to 675 in France, 254 in Germany, 133 in Italy, and 119 in the United Kingdom. And next... Amatis Biogas has completed initial construction of a multi-dairy anaerobic digester to process waste from approximately 14,000 dairy cows in Merced County, California. Currently, Amatis generates biogas from anaerobic digesters fed by 10 dairies producing approximately 300,000 metric meter BTUs per year of renewable natural gas. After completion of the multi-dairy digester and two other digesters, those numbers will increase to approximately 550,000 metric meter BTUs of RNG from 16 dairies. Amatis has signed agreements with 48 dairies and expects to add an additional 27 dairies to its biogas portfolio. When fully operational, the dairies in the Amatis Biogas Central Dairy Project are expected to generate more than 1.6 million metric meter BTUs per year of RNG and annual revenues of $250 million. And lastly, North Dakota's Industrial Commission has approved funding for three pilot projects that would create renewable natural gas. The first two projects are going to occur at the Hillsboro plant and the Van Bedaff Dairy of Carrington, North Dakota's largest dairy. The third project the commission approved was submitted by Singularity Energy Technologies for a waste-to-fuels project using what is called a, quote, sandwich gasifier, end quote. The Industrial Commission approved $455,000 for each of the first two projects and nearly $487,000 for the third. The money comes from the state's renewable energy program. And that has been your October 4th, 2024 news update brought to you by Recyclist, a trademark of Diamond Scientific. 
I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.